Okay, good evening. Good evening to those of you joining us here on a, on a Wednesday evening. Um, we're here to talk to you about na the National Benchmark Test. It's myself, Chris Lees, and my colleague, SK. Um, we're here to help you this evening. And I see lots of people starting to jump on. Shania, Krista, Yolanda, Samantha, Yvette, welcome. Thank you for joining us. We've got a couple more moments before we get started at half past five. Um, but yeah, lots of attendees streaming in. So everyone quite interested to hear about what the national benchmark tests are all about. And I'm hoping I'm going to be able to help you with that this evening. I'll do a formal introduction when we when we formally start. Um, as you're joining, it's very cool for us to understand where you are joining us from with the, the, the live online pre presentation. So if you can find the, the chat, um, it would be great if you could post um, what city or town you're joining us from and um, what school your son or daughter is at or you are at in terms of um, yeah, just understanding what school, what, what school you're at. Please post that in the chat. It's really, really nice for SK and I to see that. Thank you, Samantha from St. Dunstan's in Benoni. Awesome. Yolanda, St. Stylian's Boys College. I went there as a young prep boy before I relocated to Durban. Magnific magnificent school, that. Collegiate Girls High School in Port Elizabeth. Welcome. And, and Yvette as well from Port Elizabeth. Fantastic. So, from all over the country, mainly, mainly um, Gauteng and Port Elizabeth this evening. Um, thank you so much to you all for joining us. All right, the clock has struck 31 minutes past five and the appointed time was 5.30. And I know um, everyone's time is very precious and it's a Wednesday evening, you've finished work and um, you likely have a family that you need to get back to and, and other responsibilities. So. As we say at Advantage Learn, I'm gonna um, make this as short as possible, but as long as necessary, um, with the aim to help you in terms of navigating the national benchmark test. So let me kick off with an introduction then. My name is Crispian Lees. Um, I'm the head of education at Advantage Learn. Um, and joining me this evening to, to assist with the webinar is SK. You may not see her right now, but she's in, in, in the background assisting. There, there she is waving. Um, and she's going to raise any of your questions to me to make sure that I, I address all of your questions. Um, so yeah, feel absolutely free to post questions in the chat or in the Q&A. Um, and th for those of you joining us on, on Facebook Live, equally in the comments on Facebook, and SK will e escalate your questions to me. Um, I'm actually an educator myself. I teach the advanced programs and the academy, and I help learners prepare for the national benchmark test. And whenever I start a live online lesson, I like to first make sure that you can hear me, you can see me, and that everything is functioning correctly. So the, the way I do that is I just ask, ask everyone to raise their hands. There's a, there's a raise your hand function on the Zoom platform. And see if you can find that and, and, and raise your hand. Tamina, Yolanda, Samantha, Shania, Natasha, great stuff. Lots of hands popping up. So that means the stream is functioning correctly and you can hear me. Awesome. Okay. So the other thing I'd like to just introduce is who we are, Advantage Learn. Um, so Advantage Learn is an educational organization that assists high school learners um, with supplementary studies um, to either take their marks to the next level or support them in their, their next step towards tertiary study. Um, we started doing this via the advanced program. So we are specialists in advanced program mathematics and the recently launched advanced program physics. Um, we offer those, we, we, we run those courses 
to learners all over the country um, as part of the IEB uh, curriculum. We then help a lot of learners with self-study resources. Some of you might have been aware, might have um, come across us last year when, the, when we were plunged into lockdown um, because we made our maths online resource freely available to the nation for a number of months to support learning over that time. Um, Trish Pike is the mastermind behind that resource and the, and the, the lead curriculum designer and teacher behind the camera. And so grade eight to 12 maths resources were made available um, via our maths online. We then help learners in exam preparation. So in intensive workshops in person and live online to help learners prepare for their exams um, in the middle of the year and towards the end of the year. We have subject academies in maths, science and robotics. Um, I teach on the science academy. And I have a, have, a, have a class weekly, which I, which I thoroughly enjoy, where I work with learners to try and um, really take their science marks to the next level. And then the other aspect where we help learners is in national benchmark test preparation. Um, so, so we assist learners to prepare for the national benchmark tests. Um, and that's what I'm going to be focusing the presentation on this evening, is around the national benchmark tests. To the Towards the end of the presentation, I will um, I will give you some insight into how we how we help learners prepare for the national benchmark test. But the focus of the presentation this evening is really to help you to understand what it is all about and how to navigate this test in your matric year or the year before you are applying to a tertiary uh, institution in South Africa. Okay, so um, to kick off then, I just want to give you insights into the three areas that I'm going to be covering this, this evening. The first one is what are the national bench, what are the national benchmark tests? So I'll give you some insight into what they actually are. Then talk around who needs to write the MBTs and why they are important. And then lastly, as mentioned, I'll I'll talk towards how you can prepare for the national benchmark tests because we strongly believe that it is important to prepare for national benchmark, benchmark tests. And I'll allude to why later on in the pre presentation. Okay, so to kick off then with what are the NBTs? The NBTs are the national benchmark tests. And the NBTs were commissioned in 2008 by Higher Education South Africa as a tool to measure academic readiness for tertiary study in learners. Universities were faced with a challenge that they recognized in commissioning this test, whereby they needed to understand um, the profile of learners entering university from a university readiness perspective much better. And that was for the main reason of ensuring that universities could adapt and adjust to the new pro profile of learner entering university so as to support them as best as possible and to improve um, success rates at universities. Ultimately, universities are, are mandated to um, cultivate the skills needed in our economy and, and, and produce professionals that, that will, will, will serve those industries and, and, grow, and, and grow our nation and, and the globe. Um, and so universities really need to aim to do that. And in doing that, one of the major things that they need to try and do is ensure that as many of the, the students that start the various degree programs actually proceed to completion and enter the economy as professionals, as degree professionals. Um, and so the, the national benchmark tests were commissioned as a test to help universities to understand the readiness of learners for tertiary study. After they were commissioned at 2000, in 2008, they started to be widely used by universities at, as, as insightful assessments into academic readiness. And many universities started to recognize that they could use these national benchmark tests very effectively in augmenting um, admissions requirements and um, 
helping admissions decisions and so the national benchmark test started to become used as interim entrance requirements at certain universities and for certain degree programs where those universities were needing more information on candidates so as to make the best placement decisions that they could essentially there there, there is a challenge in admissions to higher education whereby the national senior certificate the matric matric certificate doesn't necessarily differentiate candidates sufficiently and so universities are faced with a very difficult choice in terms of who to admit into a certain degree program and who, and who to turn away and ultimately they want to make the best placement decision while enabling fair access to tertiary education but also admitting the right candidates to to increase the probability of those candidates actually succeeding at university and so universities recognized that the national benchmark test was incredibly useful in providing an additional mechanism with which to differentiate candidates and then make better placement decisions and so they started to be used as entrance requirements and since 2008 that their use as entrance requirements has become more and more prolific across uni universities in south africa because they are so helpful in that regard okay so that that is essentially what the nation net, net where the national benchmark test came from in terms of what the actual tests comprise of the national benchmark tests comprise of two assessments the aql test and the mat test and i'm now going to give you a little bit of insight into what those two tests are all about okay so let's start off with the aql test the aql the aql test aql stands for academic and quantitative literacy so essentially in the aql test two domains are being assessed academic literacy and quantitative literacy academic literacy tests learners ability to read understand and communicate meaning meaning from bodies of text so it's all about being able to engage meaningfully and um, derive um, accurate meaning from bodies of text quantitative literacy on the other other hand is all about being numerically literate literate so um it's about working with with numbers in the context of very real life applied situations that many of us come across in our daily lives. Graphical interpretation, interpreting graphs, interpreting statistics that are presented to us. Um, calculating perimeters and volumes, which, which all of us need at some point in our lives. Simple finance, finance calculations and percentage increases, percentage decrease, decreases, ratio, rate and proportion, um, all things that, that are used um, in a wide array of, 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 it, of, of very functional areas in, in real life. And so that is what academic and quantitative literacy um, assesses, academic literacy and then quantitative literacy. Importantly, if a learner needs to write the national benchmark tests, the AQL test is the compulsory test. So if you need to write the national benchmark tests, you will need to write the AQL test. The second test that I'm going to allude to now, the MAT test, is only required for certain degrees at certain universities, and I'll speak to, uh, and I'll speak to that in a moment. In terms of the style of the assessment, which is important to, which is also important to be aware of, um, it's a standardised assessment, and it's administered by a multiple choice. Questions can inc include grammar, punctuation, figures of speech, vocabulary. And then, as mentioned, for the quantitative literacy component, numerical application questions as well. All right, now to step on to the MAT test. The MAT test, which is the second test as part of the, the national benchmark test, is the mathematics test. It's a pure mathematics test. Okay, so the math test is somewhat similar to core mathematics. Um, at school um, and it tests students ability to to apply their knowledge um, and apply their, their mathematical skills. All right, the MAT test is only required for certain degree programs at certain universities, 
And as a generalization, it is usually the highly competitive degree programs and the degree programs that have uh, a large weighting of mathematics as part of their degree, uh, as part of the degree. Um, and the reason for that is it's a second test. So in terms of the highly competitive degree programs, it enables another measure with which to differentiate learners in making admissions decisions. And then obviously for maths oriented degree pr programs, it's impor very important to understand the mathematical ability of a, of a, of a candidate to make a, good, to make a good admissions decision in that regard. Um, so that is the math test. I failed to mention earlier in terms of the AQL tests, academic literacy leans on skills that you develop in your home language subject at school. So English, home language. Um, while quantitative literacy is somewhat similar to mathematical literacy. Okay. And so that's important because mathematical literacy, because in, in most instances, learners either take maths, core maths or maths literacy in South Africa. Okay. And in many ways, maths literacy learners are far better prepared for the quantitative literacy co um, component of the AQL test than core maths learners are because the maths is asked so very differently. Core maths is pure maths. Maths literacy is more, more similar to quantitative literacy. And so oftentimes core maths learners where they fall down is not necessarily in the MAT test, but more in the AQL test because it is so different to what they used to. Okay, so the MAT test, like the AQL test, is also a standardized assessment by multiple choice. And basically, learners will need to demonstrate understanding of mathematical concepts. Another significant point that you need to be aware of is that no calculators are allowed allowed in either the MAT test or the AQL test. And that is a significant stumbling block for learners today. Far too many learners are far too reliant on their calculators. And when the calculator is removed from their, their tool set, it, it can actually really disrupt um, their performance in a test and, 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 and undermine their performance because their, arithmet their mental arithmetic or their mental maths is not strong and also that they psychologically feel unsupported without the, without the calculator in the test. So my advice to you this evening for, um, for learners that may need to write the national benchmark tests is put that calculator away in your maths class. Only take it out when it is absolutely necessary for you to use it and there are many instances where you have to use a calculator. For instance, I can't tell you what sine of 23 degrees is um, by working it out in my mind, but I can tell you what 12 squared is. Um, I can tell you what 13 squared is, and you should be able to do that. Um, all right, you should also be able to tell me what sine of 30 is because that's a special angle. Um, so so um, they are very, the fact that no calculator is allowed is, is, is quite a significant um, thing to highlight. All right. Let's move on to who needs to write the national benchmark tests. So this is quite a, a, a significant and difficult question to answer for all of you and for us and for you. And that, and that is why um, I'm so glad that you've joined us this evening and that you're actually starting to engage with this question because it's an important question to answer for yourself or your son or your daughter. Um, a massive generalization is that most grade 12s applying for tertiary study in South Africa, as well as learners looking to enter competitive degree programs and or scholarship programs will likely need to write the national benchmark tests. But the key takeaway that I want you to take away from this evening is that the requirements for the national benchmark tests as admission requirements into universities across South Africa vary from university to university 
and then within a university from degree program to degree program so what every learner needs to do as a part um excuse me during their 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 the process towards applying towards university and, and figuring out what they want to do beyond um, beyond matric is do your research and to understand whether or not you need to write the national benchmark tests and in saying that you need to do your research for your first choice university your second choice university um, and possibly your third choice university as well and equally within that do your research for your first choice degree program your second choice degree pro program and your third choice de degree program because getting into university in south africa is a highly competitive um, landscape there's only so many universities and there are hundreds of thousands of learners applying to enter university and so you are not guaranteed that you will get into your the university of your choice and your first degree choice you might get into your second choice university and your second choice degree program so you need to do your research across all of those all of those um choices and if any of them require the national benchmark tests then we strongly advise that you write your national benchmark tests in your matric year there is another reason why you should strongly consider writing the national benchmark tests and that is that the results are valid for three years and should you need to change degree programs after starting tertiary study you may find that at that point in order to change degree programs you might require the, the national benchmark test at that point and we strongly feel that learners are best equipped to national to write the national benchmark tests in their matric year because either their core maths is, is close at hand because they, they're busy with it or their their math, maths literacy is close at hand because they're busy with it and their, their actual language skills when it comes to academic literacy and english home language is also close at hand and because they, they're busy dealing with those skills in matric as learners leave matric and enter into tertiary institutions as we know specialization starts to occur so either your your maths ability will start to fade or your linguistic ability may start to fade hopefully all of them continue to strengthen but that's not always the case and that's why we advise learners to write in their matric year the test results are valid for three years and so if you are at all uncertain as to what degree you are um, applying towards and you, you are uncertain around it then it's a good idea to write the national benchmark test so you have that result um, and you probably will achieve the best result in, in your matric year so that when you do get some clarity towards what you want to do um, beyond school and what you want to study in a tertiary in, in, in a tertiary context then at least you know that you've got your national benchmark test result and it should be a simple application thereafter um, there was one other thing i wanted to mention on that but it's just left my mind um, hopefully hopefully it will it will come back to me <laughs> okay then just to mention the other two points on the slide and please post questions in the chat or in the q a as i go along i am watching it so if something does come through i will i will try and address it if it makes sense to address it straight away otherwise i'll pull the questions to the end and we can address them at the end um as i mentioned if you um, need to write the MBTs, the AQL test is the compulsory test. The MAT test, as I've mentioned, is only required for specific degree pro programs, and it's generally your more competitive degree programs in terms of admission, or your degree programs that are more maths oriented. They need maths as, uh, to a high level as part of the degree. Um, so your, your science faculties, your engineering faculties, medicine, because it's so highly competitive, um, often requires the national benchmark test. Your commerce degrees um, also often re require the MAT test. Sorry, I've noticed... Oscar, there's yes. a question. <laughs> Great, thank you, Eska. Um, from Femina, thank you for your question. The question is, are all the questions asked, asked in the form of multiple choice? 
Good question. And yes, the answer is yes. Um, they are all multiple choice questions. And just maybe to elaborate on that question, um, that's 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 quite a significant thing. And um, I, I suppose it might it might actually it actually comes up in my in my next slide, which 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 I'm going to talk to. And that is that the multiple choice format proves very challenging for, for learners who haven't practiced. Okay. Um, and th that is one of the many reasons why um, we strongly advise that you prepare for the national benchmark test because multiple choice tests are very different to the tests that learners are used to at school. Most tests within the school environment are written assessments. Um, if I recall my, my school days when I did double science accounting as it was, uh, it, as it was called back then, the main exposure to multiple choice questions that I was exposed to was the first five questions in my physical science exam or my science exam. Always the first five or 10 questions were multiple choice. Other than that, I was not exposed to multiple choice questions at all. Many schools may have adjusted in that regard, but it's likely that it's largely still the same. And multiple choice questions are very difficult because um, First of all, there's often um, red herrings amongst the optional optional answers there. They're, they're answers that are there, that are given there to bait you into picking them when they actually are incorrect. So there's strategy around, around how you approach multiple choice questions. But the other significant thing is that accuracy is paramount in multiple choice questions. There is no room for method marks, which learners are accustomed to achieving in, in, in their assessments, especially in mathematics. And I would encourage you all of all of you to do this exercise. Go and find your last math script that you that you wrote. Look at the mark that you achieved. Let's say you got 80% for the test. Well done. That's a good result. But go through that test. Go through question by question and look at which of the questions you actually achieved 100% for. Five out of five. Because, or three out of three or two out of two. Because those are the only questions that you can take credit for in a multiple choice style assessment because there's no method marks. You either get it right or wrong. And um, any questions that you, you only achieve part marks for, three out of five, one out of three, you can't take credit for those marks because you would have got that wrong. Um, and then recalculate your mark based on that analysis and see what it comes out at. And what you will find is that your mark drops considerably, considerably by an order between by, by an order of between 20 and 40 percent and that's what we see with learners trying to tackle the national benchmark test is that we see a significant drop in their in their mark in the math test versus their core maths mark because it is such a different style of assessment the other thing is that um, questions are not scaffolded in the national benchmark test and what what do i mean by that so often at school you'll get a question um, where it's let's say question three and it consists of part a to e but question three a is a simple question but it leads into question b and the information you find in question b helps you towards the to answering question um, b which helps you to answering question c which helps you towards answering question d which helps you to towards answering question e which is probably the most difficult question question e but you've been helped along the solution path by the way the question has been scaffolded. It's been specifically designed to help you along the solution path. In the national benchmark test for the more difficult questions, they're unscaffolded. They're not going to lead you along. They're going to take you straight to question E and you need to have the insights to work through that solution path and get to the, and get to the answer. And so that's quite a challenge for learners and something that they need to get used to. Um, the third point here on why we why why it's important to prepare is that, um, and I'll re-emphasize it is that removing a cal calculator from a learner often causes them to st stumble in the math and the AQL test. As I mentioned before, far too many learners are far too reliant on their calculators, and calculators are not allowed in the national benchmark tests. So again, I'll re-emphasize it. In core maths at school and in math literacy at school, do yourselves a favor and put those calculators away. Only take them out when you absolutely need to use them. And there are instances where you need to use them. Um, 
but exercise your arithmetic and your mental maths your your skills of estimation because those are are what's going to come in um very handy in the national benchmark test the final point on why it's important to prepare for the national benchmark tests is the most important point of all of them and that is that uh, for many learners the results can affect their future because it forms part of entrance requirements into the degree program and university of their choosing and so if it if it does form part of your entrance requirements to university and to the degree that you're you're, you're applying towards which is the next step towards the career that you want to go into well then it does significantly affect your future and so you we strongly believe that you should give yourself your the best shot at getting into that degree program and university that you're wanting to go towards and in order to do that preparing for the national benchmark tests will definitely influence how you perform in them um, and, and influence your 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 application in, in that way so um yeah the, 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 there's many reasons why if you need to write the national benchmark test it's really important that you do prepare um, in terms of why the MBTs are important, um, I have I have mentioned to already mentioned this in previous slides. It is a competitive landscape getting into university, and so um, it's important to differentiate differentiate yourself. And admission requirements um, do require for for some degree programs at some universities that learners write the MBTs, and and so. Um, that's important in, in, in that regard. More and more institutions require it to be written before the application date for that course closes. So um, in years prior to 2020, many of the medical uh, faculties for, for medicine required that learners write before the end of June. Um, and so you need to you need to be aware of, of requirements related to that as well. But the I want to re-emphasize the, the message from this evening's presentation and that is it has varying degrees of importance per university per department and so you need to do your research as to whether or not you require the MBT, you, you are required to write the mbts if you are uncertain completely uncertain on whether you need to write them or what you're going to study off the university or if you are taking a gap year then the safest bet is to write them so that you have that result and you achieve the best result you can in writing it in your matric year when your maths, your English, or your maths literacy is close at hand. Okay. Okay, and, and, and that, that leads me on to um, how to prepare for the national benchmark tests. Um, as mentioned, do your research. Requirements are different for everyone. So that's the, the first thing to do. Then get to know more about the MBT and um, Advantage Learn, we, we the first, we. We were the first organization in South Africa to help learners to prepare for the national benchmark tests. Um, and so we've got a lot of resources on advantagelearn.com that will, will help you to get your head around the national benchmark test. One, res one, one resource which is really helpful is our free quiz um, where you can actually try an, AQ, uh, an, AQL, an AQL type test or an MAT type test so that you can get an understanding for the types of questions that you're going to need that you're going to be asked in those tests. Um, and I'll point you towards the URL to get to that, to, to, to help, you, help you in that regard. The other things you can do to, to prepare for the national benchmark tests are work hard and apply yourself at school. That is significant. And I can't emphasize that enough in both maths and in English. If you work hard at school in your maths and your English, you are definitely going to be better equipped for the MAT test and the AQL test respectively. Also, it's important to, for the AQL test to read, to engage with a lot of texts, because it's all about engaging meaningfully with texts and deriving accurate and reliable meaning from texts. Um, and then the other ways that you can prepare, prepare is by attending a preparation course. And we, we run preparation courses in person live online and via self-paced online courses in both MAT and AQL in both the languages of testing, which are English and Afrikaans. Um, so that, that, that is, um, those are the ways that you can prepare for the national benchmark test. All right. Um, how can we help you? Um, 
very similar to what I've already mentioned. Um, we run preparation courses countrywide in both AQL and MAT. We run them in person and live online, which are, are opportunities for learners to engage with an expert educator in a live capacity as we work them through um, the concepts tested in the AQL and the, and the MAT tests. But, but we also have fully fledged online courses where learners can work through the course in a self-paced manner and fit it into their, into their schedule. Um, in our courses, learners get access to, to, to mock tests, um, which are incredibly helpful so that they can practice a number of mock tests um, to get used to the type of tests that they're, they're gonna, going to encounter. No past papers or past tests are published in terms of national benchmark tests, but with our experience, are in preparing learners for many years, our mock tests are very, very um, close to what learners might encounter in the national benchmark tests. And so are extremely helpful in learners um, understanding the degree of difficulty and the types of questions that they might, that they might encounter. Our, our preparation also includes access to our expert educators via our, our, our chat feature on the platform. So even before or after a workshop, learners can engage with us live on, uh, via the chat feature with technical content related questions where we can help them through understanding that maths problem or that maths concept or that AQL concept that they're not quite understanding. Okay, um, and this is quite repetitive in terms of, of, of our preparation, but in terms of our, our workshops, as I mentioned, they're live online or in person. So you can do it live online from the comfort of your home or in person at one of our venues countrywide. Um, we all learners receive a workbook and FaceTime with an expert educator, either in English or Afrikaans at a set date and time. Whereas our online self-paced um, courses enable learners to, to set an individualized study schedule. You get 12 months access to the course, online educator support, and you can learn anytime or anywhere with our online courses, with our online self-paced courses. Um, yeah, um, the pricing for our, our MBT preparation is um, shown on the slide here. Um, so depending on what your learning medium of choice is, and, and we recognize that different learners respond to different mediums of learning. Some enjoy the self-paced online context, some enjoy the live online or, or the, the live workshop, whether it's in person or live online. Um, and so we have we have streams available for, for whatever your learning preference is. Um, and if you're preparing for, for both the MAT and the AQL, there are some um, there are some promotional discounts um, in that regard. And then some learners actually opt to do both a workshop and the self-paced um, online courses. And there are, there are combos available in that regard. And that would be the most comprehensive way um, to, to prepare for the national benchmark test. To attend a, a workshop with an educator can help you identify your gaps and then also work through the self-paced content online. Um, but both of those workshops can also, both of those mediums can stand alone. And um, they, 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 they do cover the, the same underlying concepts, or they, although they have different practice questions that we work through um, in, the, in the various contexts. Okay, um, if you decide to, 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 to prepare online, there is, also a, um, there, there is also a cost benefit there in terms of preparing, um, preparing online instead of instead of in person all right so um if you want to book for um national benchmark test preparation you simply go to advantagelearn.com navigate to our mbt page and you can follow the you can follow the flow there um, and it'll, it'll guide you on how to book we do partner with a number of schools countrywide where we we actually offer offer courses at the schools where the schools ask us to come and help their learners specifically and, and a lot of those bookings also happen via our website um, if you are from one of those, those schools. Um, what I must emphasize here is that Advantage Learn specializes in national benchmark test preparation. We help learners prepare for the national benchmark test. We do not administrate the actual tests. The actual tests are administrated by the national benchmark test project, which sits as part of CETA 
the center for educational testing and placement which is housed as a as a as a research unit unit at uct and um, in order to book your actual test you need to visit nbt.ac.za which um, i'm going to ask sgate to, to to post in the chat for all of you so that you can navigate towards that and that's actually how you book your test um, the test dates have been published and booking for the tests opens on the 1st of April. Booking a national benchmark test preparation workshop or course with us um, is, is possible already. Our, our, our dates, our workshops and our courses are already available um, for you to book. Um, so if you go to advantagelearn.com, you can, you can book a preparation course with us. Okay, if you're feeling like this is quite overwhelming, um, it's a matric year, there's a lot to go, there's a lot to, to navigate. Um, first of all, to a matric year, then it's application to university, and now as a component to application to university, you need to navigate this national benchmark test. If you need help and consultation in, in this process, you might want to consider our premium pass, um, where we actually help you through the decision process of do I need to write the NBTs, which of the NBTs do I need to write, and um, when should I write them because that's a decision to make. Um, and then the, the, our premium pass also gives learners unlimited access to, to, to live online workshops so they can actually attend multiple in the event that they actually want to reinforce their preparation and attend multiple workshops. Um, it also includes access to the self-paced courses as well. Um, so if you're finding this very overwhelming and, and, and matric is, a, is an overwhelming um, is an over, overwhelming year, um, you can reach out to us and we'll be happy to assist um, in, in navigating this. All right, so as I mentioned previously, um, the, a nice way to, to, to kick off the journey in understanding how to navigate the national benchmark tests is to actually try our free quiz. If you navigate to this URL, um, you will, you will arrive at our, at our free quiz. Give it a try. It's a good idea to get a sense for the types of questions and the difficulty of the questions that you can expect. I'll also ask SK to please post this URL in the chat so that you can navigate straight to it. So SK, if you don't mind posting the um, nbt.ac.za, which is the um, link to where they book the actual test. And then if you can post this link around how to get to the free quiz on our website to help um, kickstart their preparation. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Cool. All right. And I think that brings us to the end of the, pre the presentation, everyone. Um, yeah, so um, we, we, we arranged for a one hour slot. Um, it's now uh, 10 past six um, and that's brought me to the end of, of, of the major aspects that I wanted to cover with you. I hope you found it helpful. But a lot of the value here is for you to actually be able to ask questions around, around the national benchmark test. So um, SK and I are here to field any, of, any questions you might have. Please feel free to either put up your hand and engage with us um, vocally um, or, or post your question in the chat or the Q&A and, and I will address it. We do have some frequently asked questions um, that I will start going through um, to get the, get the questions flowing. Um, and the one is, do I have to send my results to the universities I am applying to? So um, once you write the national benchmark tests, um, the universities then um, request the results from the national benchmark test project um, the administrating organization for the tests in order to get your results to process your your application if if the nbt results is needed so no you don't have to send your results to the universities you just need to make sure that you've written the test um, by the date that it is needed for your application to university and then the university will 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 um, request the results from the national benchmark test project how much does the nbt cost the tests 
Um, for each test, it's 110 Rand to write the test. So if you, so that's for, for the AQL and the MA, MAT, it's 110 Rand each to write both, it's 220 Rand. Um, then where can I write the, write the MBT test? That, this is a very good example, a good question. Um, and I've just seen a, a question come in on the, on the chat uh, right now, which I'd like to address straight away. Ruvarash, I hope I've got your, pronounced your name correctly. Um, how many times can I write the test? Good question. Okay. You can actually write the test uh, multiple times. Um, however, most universities will use the result from your first attempt. Um, so, the, so even though you can write the, the test multiple times, most universities that need their MBT result will specifically ask for your first test result and are not so interested in your second test result because they understand that you will get better at tackling the, the test as you, as, as you tackle more of them. Um, so you can write the test um, um, more than once, but many universities specifically request your first result um, in, in, their, in their admissions decisions. So my advice to you is, is um, prepare as best as possible and, and, and give, give your first, your first um, attempt, your best, best shot um, in that regard. So thanks for the question, good, good question. Um, that brings me on to where can I write the MBT test? So 2020 was a tumultuous year for all of us and for the National Benchmark Test pro Project as well. Prior to 2020, all tests were written in person um, at test venues all around the country. And there's multiple dates throughout the year where learners could write. And um, obviously last year, in-person um, events and, in and in-person engagements were, were largely not allowed um, due to the lockdown. And so the National Benchmark Test Project had to adapt as all of us did. Um, and so they formed a strategic partnership with an, with an online testing and online test proctoring um, organization. And they developed during the course of the year an online testing method, a, a reliable online testing methodology. So now going into 2021 um, for admission to university in 2022, there are now opportunities for learners to write both in person and online. And those, the, the, the NBT's test schedule has been published on, on their website, nbt.ac.za. Um, and so you can see when the online tests are and when the in-person tests are. In-person tests will be accessible via venues all over the country um, um, for, for learners that need to write in person. And then the online test is, is obviously written um, online and remotely. And, um, you know, the, 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 the natural question that, that emanates from that is, well, how can you, how you, how can you administer a reliable online test? I mean, how can you stop a learner from having crib notes next to them and, and um, actually asking for help from their family while, while, while they, while they, they're writing the test. But um, if you, if you, if you go online and you search online test proctoring, which is what the National Benchmark Test Organization is applying, is very sophisticated technology these days to administer online tests. And, and many ESATs in America have, have been using a, an online testing uh, methodology for many years successfully. So um, they have, they track, they track your, 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 your picture via video, they track your audio via audio, and those are prerequisites for the online test. Um, they also have algorithms running that, that track your eye patterns. Um, and so, and if, and if any um, suspicious behavior is detected, uh, a person's online test is flagged for interrogation and, 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 and can be invalidated. Um, so yeah, the online testing and online test proctoring has become very sophisticated and, and the National Benchmark Test Organization have, has developed that, that competency now. And so in 2021, there are opportunities to write in person and online. And you can see, and you can see that schedule on nbt.ac.za. All right. So the last frequently asked question that I'll go through is who typically needs to sit the MAT test? Um, so 
I think I addressed this um, quite, um, I hope I addressed this sufficiently um, earlier on in the presentation, but the MAP test is largely ac acquired by your highly competitive degree programs and by degree programs that have um, a strong component of maths to them. So, that, so, so um, getting an understanding for a learner's mathematical ability is, is, is very important. Um, but as I mentioned before, you need to do your research um, per university, per degree program. Most of the universities are starting to release, the, have actually already released their admission requirements for, um, for study in 2020, 20, in 2022. Um, for instance, WITS have released theirs, um, UFS has, have, have released theirs, um, I, UCT are in the process of, of releasing their prospectus, although um, we have been in touch with their admissions department and UCT are, are, are requiring the national benchmark test across all of their programs uh, for admission into 2022. Um, but as a helpful, helpful guidance in terms of, of, of navigating this, my advice to you is find the university's prospectus for undergraduate study or their handbook for undergraduate study. That is the resource that will clarify whether or not you need to write the national benchmark test. Okay. And at Advantage Learn, we're busy compiling those because a, a, a lot of the universities have only released those requirements um, in March, now in March. We're going to compile that into a helpful consolidated format and also uh, make that available via our website to help you navigate um, the NBT requirements for tertiary study. Um, for those of you that have joined the webinar, we've got, we've, we, we have your details. And so we'll make sure that, that as soon as that resource is available, we send it out to you so that you, you're supported in your decision-making process. Um, yeah, because it's, it's not an easy, it's not an easy thing to navigate. Um, and so, yeah, we, we try to be as helpful as possible in that regard. All right. Um, I'd like to maybe, as I, as I watch the Q&A now, um, please, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to put up your hand and ask or post it in the Q&A in the chat. Um, SK, are there any questions that may have come from uh, through from Facebook? And is there anything uh, that I might have missed that you've noticed that I'm, I've missed in terms of um, helping, helping everyone this evening to navigate the national benchmark tests? Um, so there's no question from Facebook at the moment. And yeah, I think all is well. <laughs> Very good. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, Iska. Great. All right. I think we'll give one more, just um, 30 more seconds to see if any questions arrive um, via the chat or the Q&A. Um, so if you have any, a burning question that you'd like answered, please put up your hand. We're here to, we're here to answer them for you. All right. I don't see any questions. There's a question coming there. Does the online course come with mock exams? Yes, it does. The MENA, good question. The online course comes with mock tests so that you can work through similar type tests that are of similar length of a similar difficulty um, and that cover the, the domains that are that are tested. Um, pleasure, Femina. Good question. Becky Sizwe, MBT tests are for grade 12 or grade or can grade 11 write? Good question, Becky Sizwe. Um, they are for matriculants to write. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't advise a grade 11 writing the national benchmark tests. Um, when it comes to the, the, the underlying concepts that are tested, they, they are somewhat guided by the CAPS document, which is the um, curriculum and assessment policy statement, which guides the, the ordering of curriculum at high schools. So, um, so a grade 11 learner will not necessarily be well equipped to write the national benchmark test because they may not have covered a certain math section that might be assessed in the MAT test. So it's not advisable to write it in your grade 11 year. You should, you should only really write it in your matric year and, and, or, or a post matric year if you're a post matric applying to tertiary study. We have got 
a number of learners who've started preparing for the national benchmark test in grade 11 though um, but we don't advise writing the test in grade 11. Ria Betsue, um, do you have any further information on other unis that require the national benchmark tests? Um, great question. As I've mentioned, I do have information and, and we will make it available to you. A lot of universities have only recently released their requirements for admission for 2022. And so these, uh, these requirements shift year to year as universities become cleverer in terms of understanding what applicants they want in the various degree programs. Um, so the requirements for uh, 2022 tertiary study have only recently uh, been released and some universities are yet to release it. For instance, if you go to the UCT website, their prospectus is an outdated prospectus. However, if you phone the admissions department, they, tell, they, are, they are telling us that the national benchmark tests is required for all of their degree programs um, for application to all of their degree pro programs in 2022. VITS, however, on the other hand, has already published their, their 2022 prospectus. And I can tell you at VITS, the science faculty requires the national benchmark tests. The, the health science faculty requires it. Um, and there are some humanities programs that require the national benchmark tests. The University of the Free State have, have already put out a, a statement that all, you, all learners applying to the universe, University of the Free State will, will be, be required to write, write the national benchmark tests. And so this information is coming out um, is, is coming out as we speak. Uh, uh, universities are publishing their requirements as we speak. We are going to collate those requirements for you and we will send those requirements out to you so that you are well informed. Um, but yeah, a lot, of, a lot of universities have published their prospectus. Um, some uni universities have not yet. I hope that helps you. Okay, Samantha. Samantha is asking, last year the universities did not look at NBTs. Could this happen this year? That's an excellent question and it is somewhat the almost the elephant in the room. Um, so let me let me um, deal with that that question. So what happened last year was most universities were proceeding with their normal um, entrance requirements to their degree programs, um, where many of the entrance requirements did require the national benchmark tests. The country was then plunged into lockdown, and the national and and the National Benchmark Test Project was unable to run tests because of their in-person nature. Um, they did then develop the, the online testing methodology, but it was some, it somewhat delayed the testing. And so they had to, um, so a lot of universities then had to pull back on the National Benchmark Test admission requirement because um, there were delays in the testing and they needed, they needed the information to make the placement decisions in a timely manner. Um, so the question is, could this happen again this year? Um, you know, I don't have a have a crystal ball, and I and I can't and I can't venture a um, a conclusive statement on that. All I can say is that universities are releasing their admission requirements, and the NBTs form part of their admissions requirements. The other thing is that. Now the National Benchmark Test Pre Project has an online testing, um, an on online testing competency, and they've they've scheduled many opportunities for online tests, and so they are they are way better placed to administer the tests in a timely manner. And so I think there is a high probability that na the National Benchmark tests will continue to be required for for certain university degrees programs in terms of an entrance requirement. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a very good question, Samantha. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough question to answer. I think I would follow that up with the fact that, you know, when it comes to learners going to tertiary institutions, there's only actually a small percentage of learners that really know what they want to do after school. 
most of us, um, and I say us because I was in this boat when I decided what I was going to study at tertiary level, um, I ended up doing engineering because I was interested in maths and science and I knew that it was a solid degree. It wasn't necessarily that I wanted to be an engineer. Um, and most people don't know what they want to do after school. Um, and so there is, a, there is a fair probability that learners, when they go to university, they may actually at that point want to change degree programs or, or, or shift universities because by that point, they, they arrive at greater clarity in terms of what their future career, what the right future career is for them. And we never know what the requirements will be at that point. And you may then at that point of shifting require the national benchmark test. Um, so um, it really is, is, a, is, is, a, is a good thing to do in your matric year when you're best equipped to, to write it and bank that and bank that test result. The other, the other thing is it's a really excellent way to, to, to um, make sure that you are continue to prepare in your matric year because it's, it's a test that you write early on in the year and it forces preparation towards that test, which ultimately stands matrix in better stead in their final matric exams, their final national senior certificates. So our preparation courses, while they help learners towards writing the national benchmark test and, and, and doing as best as they can in the national benchmark tests, because the underlying concepts are English, maths, literacy, and, and, and core maths, our preparation courses also help learners significantly in their core maths and in their approach to English as well. Um, so yeah, um, lots to consider and a very good and deep question, Samantha, thank you. Um, all right, Ria Betsue, what would your advice for a prospective student to do in terms of writing as virtual or in person? Okay, good, good question. Um, can I just, I'm gonna address your question now, Ria Betsue, um, but it is half past six and I, and I believe that was the end time of the presentation. SK and I are gonna stay on and continue to to, to address questions. And if you're interested in the questions that come up and, 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 and my response to them, please stay on. But those of you that need to go, um, please feel, feel free to drop off and leave. And um, I hope this has been helpful to you and, and we wish you all of the best as you navigate the national benchmark tests and um, your, your matric year, if it's your matric year, and um, most importantly, your, your tertiary application um, as, as you move towards, towards tertiary studies. So, Thanks so much for joining us. For those of you that want to drop off right now, we're going to continue on with a, with, with a couple of questions. Um, okay, so, so the question now at hand is, what would your advice be for prospective students in terms of writing online or in person, in terms of the actual test? So um, I think my advice would be, if you, if you are well equipped to write the tests online, I would recommend writing the tests online. Um, but, but in terms of being well equipped to write the tests online, what that means is you have access to, to a laptop with a webcam and a, and a microphone, you have a stable internet connection, and you have access to um, a location where you um, can set up test conditions and write quiet, a, a quiet room where you won't be disturbed and, and where, where, where no one else will be around. The reason why I recommend the online test is because, well, you can write it in the comfort of a space that you're familiar with, which often help will help performance because um, performance and tests is linked to your content knowledge, but also towards your, 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 your mental space and your psychological space at that point in time stress can do to can do um, interesting things to us and um, if if that's not your context and um, you don't necessarily have access to that infrastructure then write the test in person um, uh, go and write the test in person at a, at a venue um, the national benchmark test project will obviously um, subscribe to to the um, necessarily necessary health um, regulations and guidelines um, to ensure that the venue is safe and for learners to write in the context of, of, of COVID-19. Um, so that would be my advice. If you have the infrastructure to write it online, I think you should write it online. Um, if not, writing it in person will be, will, will be equally, 
will be equally effective and, and, and reliable. Okay, I hope that's helpful. All right, so I don't see any more questions. Um, it's great that we've had so many questions come through this evening. Um, thank you. It, it does make the presentation a lot more enjoyable um, responding to, to your questions and some, some really great questions were posed. Um, so yeah, I think we'll, we'll, we'll formally close there. Um, SK, thank you for your support this evening, as always. Thank you, Chris. That was wonderful. And then to all of you that have joined us this evening, um, thank you for your time. Um, we hope you, you found it informative um, and good luck as you navigate the national benchmark tests and you, and you navigate um, tertiary applications. All of the best to you.